This week on the show. I think I needed that push. I needed a little bit of that fear and that fire in me and that competitiveness uh, to write yeah. some really great scripts. Josette Alpert. I hadn't done any big comedies up until that moment. So it was my first time delivering jokes on screen. It was my first time doing physical comedy. Actor, writer, dancer. You never get to jump into an experience of being a zombie of dying multiple times, of doing like physical stunts. It's just, it's magic. Having blood on you and then going to school. And... Known for the other kingdom, Antisocial 2, level 16. A story is like a monster that you've created right. and you have to just let it just do its thing and live and breathe and be its own being. Let's talk to Josette Alpert on the Very Creative Podcast. Josette Albert, how are you? I am good. How are you? I'm good. I'm like reaching out. I'm trying to hug you through the screen. Oh my gosh, <laughs> I miss you so much. <laughs> yeah, me too. Uh, it's been a while. Uh, yeah. We became friends in Toronto when mm -hmm. I was at York and you were at York doing yep. uh, screenwriting. Yep. Uh, yeah, it's uh, it's been uh, a while. I've, I've moved back to Montreal and now... Uh, like, I don't see you anymore. <laughs> I, I'm pretty sure you saw me, like, two days before you left. And I was like, oh, yeah. we need to hang out again next week. And you're like, oh, no, I'm leaving. Yeah. Yeah, unfortunately. I don't know what, what <laughs> I was happened like, Gabe, there. why didn't you tell me? <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. It was, uh, yeah, it was, like, it was decided, I think, a week or, or so before. So it was kind of new to me, too. Yeah. Well, you go, you go where the wind takes you, but I think it's good that you're at home during this whole thing. Yeah, yeah. Because you're closer to your fam, for yeah. sure. Well, I was trying to find a job in Toronto and in, in the, the the creative world, and I also missed my family here. <laughs> uh, so it was kind of a decision of the moment, uh, yeah. based on circumstances and everything, life. So yeah. Well, we're talking now. <laughs> yeah, we're talking now. Eventually, we'll get back together in person. But for now, it's just over Zoom and podcast. Yeah. Well, <laughs> introduce yourself to everyone. Okay. Uh, my name is Josette Halpert. I consider myself an all-around creative. Uh, before the pandemic, you could have found me in literally every audience of every show to exist. Music, dance, theater, all of it. Um, I'm a writer. I'm an actor. I do a lot of voiceover and cartoon and radio. And now you can find me mostly dancing on the internet in various <laughs> locations, yeah. uh, reaching out over social media and doing fun podcasts with my friends. Yeah. Well, yeah. Thank you for that. <laughs> <laughs> well, you have also, you have like a great Instagram. We can show the people. Aww. We can talk about it later. Okay. But uh, let's quickly show people. Uh, You're showing my Instagram. Well, wow. yeah, it's it's very stylized, and we can talk about your creativity here. I think it's uh, it's amazing. Thanks. Uh, and yeah, so uh, people can check you out. Uh, here's the. There's my Instagram. Here's my all of my social media is under like just my full name, Joe Said Halpert. Right. Um, right. Yeah, and I'm on everything. I recently started Pinterest as well. I have right. a Facebook. I have Instagram and TikTok. And Twitter, well, but do people yeah, use TikTok Twitter? TikTok too, yeah. yeah. TikTok uh, has been TikTok. a thing during this pandemic, and uh, you've proven to be great at it. You joined me on TikTok. You were on TikTok for a bit there. No, I shaved my head, and I was like, I'm going to do the Breaking Bad thing, and I did it, and I was <laughs> like, and I then I, I kept getting caught in rabbit holes, and sometimes when I open TikTok, I was like, I'm like, oh, fuck. No. It's true. You end up endlessly scrolling for hours yeah. and hours. Yeah. So, um, no, I I prefer to do podcasts and to write. I mean, it's a lot of time. It's yeah. a lot of time. Yeah. Totally. So I'm very, <laughs> I'm very interested in finding out how you get all that time. Because it's, a, I, I guess it's acting too. Yeah. And, uh, oh, that, for sure. That keeps your acting brain going. Yeah, I mean, there hasn't been a lot for 
actors to do during the pandemic to keep their skills sharp. I know a lot of my friends have started TikTok, have been posting monologues, have been doing virtual stand-up, virtual theater. It's really been cool to watch it evolve and to see where those creative minds are shifting towards. I personally really enjoy TikTok mostly because I teach dance and it's a great way to see primarily young dancers, 14, 15 year olds are mostly on the app that and crazy people like me trying to do their dances. But that's um, how you started, right? the, what? The, the dancing is how you started TikTok? Or if I'm yeah, I did. You did YouTube um, thing before too. I did a couple of YouTube videos at the beginning of the pandemic because yeah. I was teaching dance and I had told my kids I was going to see them in a week. And then the world shut down and I just felt this overwhelming heartbreak for them who, yeah. you know, I teach mostly toddlers and they're just getting those moves for the first time and they're all excited. And then the world shuts down and where do they put that energy? And so I created a YouTube channel doing all of our favorite games, all of our favorite songs. And I sent them out to the world and said, please, if you want to come and yeah. bring your kid and put them in front of the TV and play this with them, by all means, go for it. By the way, these videos are so great. The, the, the videos that you put out at the beginning of the pandemic are so great. Oh, thanks. It was really <laughs> weird talking to the camera like it was a four-year-old. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so used to kids singing back at me and like answering so and great. having just... Yeah crickets <laughs> was really interesting oh yeah it's uh, and then you transition into tiktok which is a, also really amazing but like it's 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 great to see you still doing things and still uh especially for the kids because you're really involved with the kids and that's a beautiful thing i think oh thanks yeah well yeah like you said you're an actress you're a dancer you're a writer a voiceover artist mm -hmm. um so I wonder how, because we, we start on this podcast, how you grew up. So I, I'm wondering where, because I, when I talked to David Marino, the, the previous guest, and Jalen Taylor, who was the first episode, mm -hmm. uh, we concluded that you're not born uh, an actor or a singer or dancer or whatever, you know? You, you become that way through circumstances or through parents bringing you to class or whatever, you know? So how, how did that happen? Where did you grow up, first of all? And uh, yeah, tell us a little bit uh, about your situation. Sure. Um, I grew up in the greater Toronto area. I'd actually argue in my case, I was very much born with this strange perspective on life. Really? Wow. Uh, I was talking to my mom this morning about um, my early childhood and where, was, where did the creativity come from? And she said, you, like, I innately had this ability to see what everyone else was doing and be like, how can I do something entirely different? <laughs> and right. dress, I dressed in princess dresses every day of my youth. I had big bows that matched every outfit. I would sit outside playing in the flowers. Like I was very much in my own little imaginary world. And I do think that that was definitely fostered by my parents uh, and my entire family is filled with creatives. Yeah. But um, my, my parents love theater. They love dance. They love all of those things. And they never, let, they never um, shied away from it when I got excited about it. They would bring me to see more and expose me more. So they definitely built on that creativity, but I always had a very um, interesting perspective on the world. Even as a little kid, I was always seeing everything very sunshine and roses, um, mm -hmm. very romantically and beautifully through this very pink lens. <laughs> Right. Yeah. That, that's true, though. The, that's an interesting point of view because I think I was born with a like a creative brain. Like mm -hmm. you have to. There's something there. Like your your brain, yes, has to be nurtured by the environment and has to be like helped. But uh, you have to to be born like interested in the the world and like it's it's weird how it works like it's mm -hmm. somehow the environment that influences you but it's also the way you're born so yeah that's an interesting point of view yeah yeah so totally. yeah so when uh 
when was your first uh, creative? Uh, when did you start to to be like? Oh, did you go on a stage or what? What was your first start? I was very outgoing as a kid, and then went through a very shy period around um, the first grade, I would say. And I was actually terrified of being on stage. I told my mom, if I go on stage, I will die. I was very dramatic. I was like, this will be the end of me if someone puts me on a stage with a spotlight. Yeah. And then as soon as I was put on that stage, I was like, I am never leaving this stage. This is now my home. <laughs> you will have to claw me off of it. Right. But I think my first ever experience as a creator where people started to take note was in, um, I think it was the second grade. Okay. I was writing a short story for class and everyone was writing very mystical, magical. There are princesses, you know, there are frogs, there's all of these fairy tale creatures. And that's kind of what you're taught to be interested in at that age. And I wrote something that was totally different. I wrote something that was a little bit more heartfelt um, and sincere and well beyond my years for a second grader. And it was just like a homework assignment. And my teacher asked if she could submit it for a creative writing award. And I had no idea what that meant. And I was like, sure, go ahead. And I That's ended awesome. up, yeah, yeah, that was my first published writing was wow. in grade two. <laughs> grade two? Yep. Jesus Christ. Yep. <laughs> well, it's, uh, it began early. Yeah, just picture me with the big bow in the princess dress being like, I'm not writing about princesses. <laughs> <laughs> that's totally you though yep oh boy so uh, let's backtrack a bit uh you said your parents were very creative too a little bit yes. uh yes. so what do your parents do and uh how did that creativity uh, what, what was that creativity in their life well my mom is an incredible visual artist um okay. she actually volunteered a lot in my school growing up. We made murals with our classes. She came in for Pioneer Day and taught people how to make candles. She was very hands-on and very creative. My dad um, develops software um, and is an architect and right. does a lot of really cool creating in the computer space. I have like a lot of cousins that are into writing and and photography and wow. I'm surrounded by creatives and it's the most amazing family. I'm so lucky to have people who oh. I can look up to and did look up to my entire life who were doing the things that I eventually wanted to be right. doing. So that definitely um, helped shape who I oh, am yeah. today. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I bet. Cause uh, my mom paints a little bit uh, on the side, uh, but I'm surrounded by businessmen or business women <laughs> and uh financial people it's uh it's weird that i am here <laughs> and i'm being a, a podcaster or a writer uh sometimes an actor you know it's uh it's kind of weird that i arrived here yeah well maybe someday you'll sneak some finance into like a, a book you're writing and you'll be like there we go there's the representation from my family yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. um it's interesting. Now that I'm thinking about it, I have a lot of family that are very into visual that do that kind of aspect, but I don't, I think I might be the innovator of the family in film. I don't know that there's anyone who's done film. Yeah. Uh, so yay. That's exciting that I brought that to the table and now I'm making right. everyone else do it. My dad, I'm signing him up for a TikTok. Uh, okay. Wow. <laughs> He's That's finding out right now through this podcast. Oh, He's okay. going to be joining okay, me on TikTok. Um, I've included my sister. My sister did acting for a little bit. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, talk about that a little bit because she's going to be a dentist, right? So yes, she is. She, didn't, she took a different path. She is a dancing acting dentist. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, but I really do think that it's still very much a creative profession and a lot of STEM yeah. and um, yeah. medical work does involve that ability to find creative solutions to problems that no one has seen before. Um, she is really, really great at um, visual art. And I think that that helps a lot with dental work because you need to be able to like create masterpieces in people's mouths. That sounded weird. Yeah. But yes, 
That's interesting. It's weird, but it's interesting. Yeah, she's currently in the other room during her online schooling. Um, but they're doing a little bit in class as well. She's got her okay. first patients coming in, which is really oh, exciting wow. and also terrifying as a big sister to think of your sibling in a professional field being amazing and excelling at it. Uh, uh, I'm the last person that she's allowed to work on because I know that immediately when she like pulls out any tool and tries to be serious, I'll just start laughing and probably ruin it. And yeah. I'll end up with like a half frozen face because of it. So. <laughs> uh so funny uh, but she's still creative that's that's great definitely she still dances she um was head of mindfulness mindfulness week last yeah. year she is an orientation leader she is on the dance floor at every event uh, she definitely still uses all of those creative skills she was on the art committee that chose the art for the UFT building this year so she's still using all of those skills just in a very different way it's crazy we, yeah, that's what I'm finding out. That's what I'm interested. Like I, right now I'm talking to mostly artists, but I really want on this podcast to like talk to like surgeons or like car makers or CEOs or. For sure. Like, they're still creatives. That's for sure. Everybody's creative in their own way. Yeah. And it's interesting to, yeah, find out what that is, what, mm -hmm. how that compares to me or to my friends that are artists. It's, totally. Uh, yeah. Uh, so when was your first acting gig? My first acting gig, I think I was nine. Um, and it was for Care Bears. It was for these Care Bears that when you press their little hand, they start singing along with you. Um, and I think I was playing four. So I was nine and I was playing an age four. <laughs> and I had lines. And I remember I... I got so nervous I threw up on the way there yeah. <laughs> and I was sobbing and I was like what do I do that was a common occurrence for me very dramatic very I can't do this I can't do this right. as a kid and then having the parents be like no you love this go try it and then me yeah. immediately loving it and never wanting to let go of it and I think that right. was true from my very first gig uh Wait, Care Bears commercial. commercial okay yeah Care Bears I'll send it to you you can play it <laughs> It's on the internet. No, I've seen it, I think. Yeah, yeah. you sent it to me at some point. Yeah, I yeah. say something like, wow, they really talk to each other. And they sing with each other, too. Yeah. How was, uh, yeah, how was it acting at that time, is it, like, compared to now? Oh, like, it's totally different. Yeah. Um, although the people have stayed the same. It's interesting. The people in that commercial are still my friends in, in the industry today. Wow. <laughs> So that's, that's cool. Uh, that network has stayed strong, but everything else has changed. Uh, my first commercial was on film, on celluloid film. So that's aging me. <laughs> um, yeah, they had to stop to reload the camera. They still had loading and re reloading the camera. So <laughs> things have definitely changed. There was a lot less child actors, I would argue, yeah. back then because... I think with shows like Dance Moms and other reality shows that show um, that kids could accomplish that. People, it was more or less unknown when I was a young child actor. And so you would see the same five, six people in every audition. And now I go into audition rooms with kids and it's like 500 children. And oh I think God. I would have been too anxious to be starting now. It would have made me terrified. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Were you... Uh... Because right now I feel like you know a lot of the business and the side of it. And were you at that time, oh, my God, I'm doing a film. I'm doing a commercial. I, I had no exploding. idea. Yeah, I had no idea you got paid. Oh, wow. I started and I loved it so much. And I thought, like, I should be paying them for the opportunity to do something like this that I loved so much. Like, it didn't make That's sense to me. Feel. Yeah. Well, I had been taking dance classes and you pay right. for your dance class. So I just assumed when you did a commercial, like you paid them. I didn't understand that it was a job and you get paid for it. I'm pretty sure some mom down the road said, oh, and how much does she make? And it was the first time where that had clicked like, oh, <laughs> that's a thing. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we were totally new to the industry. We didn't know anyone or anything. My mom came to my first audition and was 
terrified when they said, we're going to take your cute little pigtail girl into a back room by herself with a bunch of strangers and you stay here. <laughs> it's such a strange experience as yeah. a parent to put your kid in that situation. Um, yeah, we had no idea that that was the norm. We didn't know what a callback was. I'm pretty sure my mom got in trouble for not having a cell phone at the beginning because agents were trying to call me with auditions and work and were calling my <laughs> home phone and we weren't picking up for like two days. At least you had a phone that they could call. Yeah, but when definitely it, up, it was a huge learning curve. Now I feel very comfortable in that, but um, at the beginning it was all just learning as I went. Right. Well, yeah. It's uh, it's fascinating to yeah because I I talked to David who, who was singing at, at that age too and he's like oh my brain was exploding I was having so much fun and now I know the business and it's different I still enjoy it and I love it but it's different it's very like it's not the same at all it's know? true it's true yeah. the more that you know about it the more slightly jaded and realistic you are about the goals yeah. <laughs> as a kid I would go into these crazy auditions and not even realize the weight that they carried right like parts where i'm like wow i really that was an incredible opportunity and i was just like i learned my lines and had fun and yeah. i think that in order to be really successful creatively you have to still have a little bit of that mindset mindset that you're just having fun right. and doing what you love and worrying less about those outcomes and all of the politics and all of the business side of it being aware, but also knowing when to abandon it and just be a kid and love it again. Right. It's, uh, yeah, I, I'm sure you relate a little bit to child actors that, that come out and that HBO film that came out, I think, not long ago, or Showtime. I don't remember. I haven't seen it, but I definitely, I, I know right, a lot right. of child actor stories. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure, yeah, because you were a child actor a little bit. Yeah. So when When did your... you start? Um, I wanted to be a child actor. Yeah, I remember we talked about this. You were like, if only I started sooner. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, I had a lisp. So it was uh, a little bit strange for me to, yeah. And um, yeah, I was wearing braces and I had acne at some point. <laughs> so it was, a, it was a hard road to get to where I'm at now. So kind of, yeah, I tried. But yeah, I did all, uh, some commercial, not commercials, but I, I, I went, I was close to it. Yeah. We all had that phase. Mine is just hidden. It's in some sad uh, Facebook album that no one is ever going to see. <laughs> right. The awkward phase. We all forget it happened when we're accomplished and professional adults. You right. know, when we have our book published, <clears throat> <laughs> we forget yeah. that those teenage years existed. Up now. On uh, GabrielVega.com. Uh huh. <laughs> Product <laughs> placement. Please purchase. Nothing stays buried forever, especially not the past. Yesterday is not yet gone. A mystery novel by Gabriel Vega, host of the Very Creative Podcast. Available now, paperback and digital. GabrielVega.com. Buy it now. So what happened after that commercial? Uh, when did you, did you book stuff right away? Or once once they figured out that I could deliver dialogue and I could do all of the things, but look a lot younger than I was, I booked with that same um, production company every single commercial that they came to town for. I did Crazy. all of the Spin Master toys. <laughs> oh. I got to keep a few, which as a kid was very exciting. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> Yeah, I had been working. I did a lot of commercials. I want to say like 40, like a lot of commercials and a little bit of print. I did a little bit of modeling. And then eventually around age 12, I wanted to be seen as a professional adult. And I started doing uh, film and TV. Okay. And uh, what, what was your first uh, gig for film and TV? My first big gig was a American Girl, you know, the doll company. Oh, okay. They have historical dolls um, and they have movie spinoffs. So I did the World War II doll and it was crazy. I had auditioned to be a, a background dancer and they offered me a role as the villain, I guess, like the nemesis, the mean girl of the lead. Right. Uh, and it was an amazing experience. Your first ever big 
job is to be in a Disney movie. <laughs> like, that's crazy. And they still right. play it every year. And I still get comments and people freaking out over my first job, which I look back and I'm like, uh, oh my gosh, so much cringe. I could see how hard I was working on the lines. I could watch the wheels turning in my head. Yeah. But it's really cool to like have that timeline and see yourself at all the different ages and the progressions of your creative journey. But right. yeah, that was my first big job. That's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Villains are fun to play. I always get villains and I don't understand this. I try to think I am a nice person. <laughs> <laughs> so why is it that people keep casting me as mean? <laughs> I mean, it's a fun part. It is fun. I think it's a lot more fun and complex to get into those minds for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, no, it's great. So, what happened after American Girl? Um. Oh, it is a blur. There was a lot. I did a couple of um, classic Canadian TV shows. I did a few movies. Um, I started doing cartoon work, kind of by accident. People were like, you have a great voice when you're doing commercials. Uh, you have a really mappable voice and you have lots of range. Right. So they threw me into my first voice audition and I've been doing that ever since. So yeah. that's cool. <laughs> Talk a bit about uh, the, the cartoon work because it's interesting, the process. You go into a studio and uh, you do things. Well, well, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's fascinating to me. A dream yeah. job. And honestly, I think you would be so great at it. If there are casting directors watching, please hire Gabe because he has the best voice listening. In I these can headphones. make voices. You really can. And you you have such a naturally like beautiful voice to listen to. Well, thank um, you. Anyway, so the process of voice acting, I guess it's yeah. a little bit different than an audition. Sometimes you get a photo of a character. Sometimes you don't. Sometimes you get a script. Sometimes you don't. You show up to the studio right. and you have the idea of what kind of voice you're doing in your head. And then you go in, you audition. The process for auditioning is pretty similar, except no one cares what you look like, which is my favorite part of voice acting. You can make all the weird faces. You can show up in your PJs. No yeah, that's what I was going to say. You can show up in your PJs and uh, uh, glasses and like no makeup. It's, it's fascinating. That's it's, what I like about voice work. But now like, I'm on Zoom, so let's, uh, <laughs> I'm on camera. So you've got all your makeup on? <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm, I'm full, yeah. Full face. Full face. Full yeah, face. it's my dream to one day show up to a studio just in my onesie and, and my Pikachu onesie and just have a day talking into a microphone. It is weird, though, to come out into the real world and have other people reply to you all of a sudden. Yeah. I, when I was doing uh, Go Away Unicorn, which is one of my more recent shows, I would be recording a bunch of episodes in one block. So I would spend all day in a studio, in a little booth, talking to myself. And then I would come out and sit in the Uber and I'd be like, hello, how are you today? And I'm like, oh, there's another person here that can talk back and I don't have to speak like a cartoon anymore. <laughs> That sounds a little bit like uh, you would be uh, in the movie in the 60s or the 40s, you know, the, the voices they had to make, the Hollywood yeah. I It's funny. I had to do um, an audition recently where I had to do an old Hollywood accent. Oh, it, wow. It was so much fun to put that yeah, on and to just jump back in time for a second and pretend I was part of that world because I feel like, honestly, I, I should have been born into that world. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I would have loved to do a movie with Cary Grant or Audrey Hepburn and just to see those personalities because you, you kind of know about a lot about them now and just to see what was true, was what was how they, they worked, what was their process. I'd love to get him on this podcast, Cary Grant. <laughs> put it, put it out there into the universe. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, it was such a difference. From the dad for, for me. Yeah. <laughs> I, it was, do a seance episode, <laughs> October, it's coming. <laughs> it was such a different um, world back then. They had a studio system. They had a star system, which I would argue in Canada, we don't have so much. Uh, in voice, I think there is more of that. There are definitely known names in the industry, but on screen, not so much. Yeah. It seems like the, the voice world seems very tight shut. And very, uh, yeah, very small. And frankly, for me, I don't know a lot about it. I don't know. Yeah. 
where where <laughs> to get in and you know it's uh it's very mysterious yeah i had an agent that made, oh commercials voice commercial and, and stuff but it's very close Yes, it's it's a very different industry for sure. I feel very lucky that I somehow got my foot yeah. in the right door over the years, but I'm definitely walking into most studio spaces being the person with the least on my resume of experience and fangirling over the people that yeah. I'm in a booth with. Um, I've gotten to work with the voice of Caillou, which was crazy. The voice of Franklin the Turtle, uh, Lunette the Clown. It's just my childhood yeah. talking back in a studio and I'm just sitting there shaking behind the mic. Like this is the coolest thing I've ever done. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. It is definitely a mysterious world. Um, and it takes a lot of auditioning. I think I auditioned for years before I booked my first voice gig. And actually some of my biggest voice gigs were jobs that originally they were planning on booking someone else. And I just kept going in on auditioning and eventually uh they decided to give me the part and I'm very grateful for those opportunities but it definitely takes a lot of hard work and a lot of perseverance and it is very very different than on-screen acting yeah it's so so much fun obviously yeah a lot more laryngitis than on-screen acting <laughs> oh boy okay <laughs> um yeah. So, uh, and then you you did a lot of TV work. Uh, you you booked The Other Kingdom, yes. uh, which was on for a season. Mm -hmm. So, talk. Uh, how did that happen? That was a crazy experience. So, I got the audition, and I was halfway across the world on a trip with my younger sister, <laughs> and I'm pretty sure I said no to the first audition. I was like, wow. I I was getting back that day on a 12 hour flight. And okay, I so did not of the script. Yeah. The script was huge. I loved, I loved the script. Oh, okay. I loved the yeah. character, but it was 12 pages. And after a 13 hour flight, I think I had an hour to go home and then go to the audition. So I ended up doing it because I read the script and I loved the character. She was a character who isn't the mean girl, but she is someone who knew what she wanted she is the future female president and she doesn't let people push her around. And I think that that's something that is really needed in kids shows, specifically for that age bracket. They tend to do a really great job of having a hero and having a villain. And especially girls against girls, I don't think that's helpful. And when I read this character who is viewed as a mean girl, but she had all of these amazing layers and reasons, and she was actually just assertive, and knew that she was confident in what she loved and wanted to do, I, I needed to play her. And she was hilarious. She had some of the best lines that I've ever gotten to say on camera. Yeah. I got to say, if I, was any, if I was any vegetable, I would be a potato because they're versatile and they have eyes everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like some of the craziest things, but uh, I'm getting away with myself. The audition process, I got off the plane. I went to my first audition. They really loved it. My character was originally named Riley, and it ended up becoming Haley, I think, my first day of filming. So up until then, I was still Riley. Um, I auditioned, I want to say, four times, and then we did a Nickelodeon read. So they had Nickelodeon, I guess, over their version of Zoom watching us, and then this huge panel of executives, oh and the God. creator, uh, Tommy Lynch, was, was there. Like? Uh. It was terrifying. Yeah. When I get nervous at auditions, and I'm sure lots of creatives feel this way, you feel like you have to go to the washroom like 500 times. Not even because you need to go, just because you need something to do to keep yourself busy so you don't go insane in the waiting room. Yeah. So I'm pretty sure I went to the washroom like 100 times in that yeah. <laughs> experience. Uh, and the audition process started, I think, at 9 o'clock in the morning, and it was on the Degrassi lot. So that's not terrifying at all. You walk in and you see Degrassi. <laughs> And you see working actors and you see the thing that your goal is. Yeah. And um, they put you in a waiting room with everyone else auditioning for your roles who they flew in from all over the world. <laughs> and you have to go in and just nail it every time. They chemistry reads, they have you read with different characters. Yeah. They have you read as different characters. I was reading as I think two characters in my chemistry read. And then 
by the end of the experience, I think it was six o'clock at night and wow. they had lined up all of, all of my soon to be friends and castmates. And they said, we're going to let you know sometime soon. <laughs> Yeah. So and just so people can understand, like you had to audition a lot until that point for that role. And absolutely. You had to audition for the studio. Yep. And I auditioned for and just the scary. creator, just the, yeah, the entire studio. And then they had final say. And I think there was a week gap bet between when I did that chemistry read and when I found out. And in that week, I was the biggest pain because... I was just so anxious running around in circles, yeah, I stressing. I watched an entire season of Lost. Oh That's God. how much time I had <laughs> to waste. Yeah. And then we got the call that I had booked one of the roles and they weren't sure how many episodes I was going to do. And I ended up doing, I think, every episode but one because it was during exam season. And I still kept up school at the same time as filming. Oh and they God. allowed me to do that, which was a dream. Yeah. You were, you were doing school and doing the show. That's crazy. Yep. I would film from, I would wake up at five, sometimes earlier than that, go film all day, finish around six, and then and be in class. it was exam season. Yep. And then, and then be in class by seven. I filmed for an entire, almost an entire year of school. So yeah, oh it was, it was grueling, but it was the most fun I think I've ever had to be able to push yourself creatively and yeah. physically some days because there was a lot of physical uh, yeah. comedy <laughs> yeah. uh, was just a dream. That's yeah. the goal. I want to go back and do that again. <laughs> I want another cartoon, uh, not cartoon. I want another um, Yeah, you want another show. cartoon. <laughs> I also want another cartoon, but I want, I want another comedy yeah. because I love comedy is so much fun and the cast was so much fun to work with. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's, uh, yeah. I'm sure you didn't, want to do your, your school work at that time well you know what the school is also great i mean i was in film school so i felt like i was getting yeah. a hands-on exact practical reality of what i was aiming towards and like learning it was funny we were learning about call sheets as i'm getting the emailed call sheet for the oh next day and it was really cool to have that exact practical experience and like transition both of them and learn that's that's crazy yeah yeah, it, it was a, a great concept too. Like it, it came from Midsummer Night's Dream a little bit. Yes. Uh, from Shakespeare. Uh, I, I love that. Uh, yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's sad, but yeah, show gets canceled, and I'm sure, yeah, it was hard for you. Uh, yeah. Yeah, but it was also really cool because um, it still plays worldwide in different yeah. languages. Uh, my family in the Netherlands saw me speaking Dutch for the first time. Oh, my God. <laughs> uh, I heard myself speak Russian, uh, so many different languages that I didn't speak. I'm pretty sure I was on vacation in um, Punta Cana, and they were playing it on TV. It's just, yeah. it's crazy. <laughs> and it gave, gave you a big boost for your career, too, because once you get a, a kind of a lead role or regular on a tv show you, you you have that on your resume and you can book great jobs after that yeah and i think more importantly it gave me the confidence to know that i could handle it because yeah the the amount of dialogue and jokes i i hadn't done any big comedies up until that moment so it was my first time delivering jokes on screen it was my first time doing physical comedy doing gags being covered in flour on camera, all of these crazy things that uh, who gets to experience the like actual banana peel slip, right? And yeah. having that confidence going into my other auditions, I'm sure I booked better, not even just because of the resume, but because of the confidence that I walked in there. Like, I can do this. I know I can. I've done it before. Yeah. For sure. You got, you got fans from it. You got like, yeah, that, that must have been something too. Yeah. <laughs> I got followed in the mall. It was so cool. Oh, really? and, and my, my younger cousins were there. And so, I mean, it's fun when you get recognized, but if there's no one there to experience it, it's less exciting than when your little cousins suddenly think you're cool because people are like, oh my God, you're from the show. Yeah. <laughs> that must be weird. That must be weird. But there were young fans too. That, that, must, be, that must be cool, you know, to, to be the, the idol for the, those kids, you know? Yeah, it was very exciting and not something that I take lightly. I try really hard 
whenever I see a little kid who recognized me to give them a hug and to yeah. ask about Not them. Not right now. Not right Not now. Not right now. <laughs> to give them a virtual hug. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. So did you do the horror film before that? Yes. Yes, okay. I did. Uh, I think it was the summer before. I th Ooh, I need to check my own IMDb. <laughs> yes, I think it was before that. Yeah, I think it was before that. Uh, when was the show? 2016? Yeah, yeah, it was right before that. I think I was auditioning for it while I was filming the other thing. Okay, anyway, yeah. it was before that. Mm -hmm. uh, and yeah, so let's backtrack to that. Uh, you did a horror film, which is exciting. Yeah, uh, I think I've I'm done... I'm a horror fan. I've done is, two horror, horror films. Okay. I'm such a huge horror fan. I'm such a nerd Yeah, you for just horror. did one. Yeah, you just did one for Allmark, right? Yes, well... I don't know if that's considered a horror. Okay, yeah. It's somewhere in between the realms, but level 16, I think, is somewhere in between horror and thriller okay, right. and antisocial, too. Definitely horror. Yeah, I'm a Gemini. I like to do, you know, children comedy and cartoons, and then I like to also do things where people explode blood and guts. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. So how was that experience? How... How did that come to you? And uh, what was it like to be in a horror film? It's oh. antisocial too, right? Yes. Yes. I'm pretty sure there's actually a deal going on right now um, on their website where you can buy it for a discount. So if you want to go and do that. Um, yeah, that it was an amazing script. I had watched the first antisocial and I knew that it was something that I needed to be a part of. And we, I immediately clicked with the director I found out within the week that I had booked it, and I think it was 20-something days of filming every okay. single day <laughs> to get that the, film. The, the, the idea, premise? Like if you want to pitch it to people. Um, so the original Antisocial uh, follows the premise of this main character named Sam and her friends as they're experiencing this sort of zombie apocalypse-esque virus that is infecting people and making people, uh, it's very telling of like current society, honestly, if you, you rewatch oh, it. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's a virus infecting everyone and they've all become these connected addicts of this social media website that turns them into zombies. Right. And so the second story picks up where that one uh, leaves off. There is an update to this virus and no one knows what it is. And the key to that is this new character, this young girl who's a tech whiz and her name is Bean, which is my character. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's great. So how was it making the movie for 28 days, right? It was awesome. I don't know if it was 28. It was definitely very, very oh, short time there. span for yeah. a film. Usually films take months like months and months and months yeah. um this was short it was indie which means it was a smaller budget a smaller crew and i honestly love projects like that because it feels like family and everyone there loves what they're doing and i think that was my first indie experience and it makes me want to do so many more especially with those people in particular black fawn films was amazing to work with. It's uh, a group yeah. of amazing dudes who make amazing horror films. Uh, yeah, it was a dream to film. I got to be splattered in blood. I also filmed that one during school. And oh I came back to university covered in blood with uh, brain matter all over <laughs> my body. And they actually, to get me into a car, they had put down garbage bags and I was sitting like this, just covered in blood. And then I waddled out on campus looking like that. And no one said a thing. <laughs> right. I was expecting some like police to be called. This girl is running around looking like she has just been murdered. Oh, but no. Oh, boy. Uh, that's <laughs> hilarious. You're, yeah. you're like, oh, uh, sorry. I was in a, a film. <laughs> it's another experience that unless you're a creative in this industry in particular, you never get to jump into an experience of being a zombie of dying multiple times, of doing like physical stunts. It's just, it's magic. Having blood on you and then going to school and then trying blood to is, explain. Blood is sticky, let me tell you. It took a lot of showers to get that off. Yeah, it's a bunch of syrup and uh, mm -hmm. chocolate. And yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it's weird how you make it. But uh, yeah, it must be, yeah. Did you get caught with that blood on you or? 
No, I didn't. People just looked at me like, eh, it's another Thursday. (laughs) (laughs) Oh my God. The only person traumatized was my poor mother who saw me and was like, I I don't like her watching any of my death scenes because I could tell it hurts her emotionally to see her daughter like that. And she was very much creeped out that I was covered in blood. Um, I also, for that film, had the opportunity to have my sister on set for a day. So she, fun fact, played an extra in the film. And she was a zombie that I was running away from. So she got fully zombified. I got drenched in blood. It was a great time. (laughs) (laughs) And then after The Other Kingdom, you did level 16, which uh, is stressful to watch. (laughs) Let me just say that. Sorry. (laughs) My bad. I should (laughs) have warned you. No, it's... It's great. It's, uh, I, I love those movies. I, I, yeah, it's, uh, for, for those who are asking what it is, it, it's a great sci-fi film, 82% on Rotten Tomatoes, which is amazing. So level 16. And uh, you worked with uh, Sarah Canning, who's from uh, Vampire Diaries, which she's I'm very a, jealous she's of. amazing. Yeah. How was that working with her? Were you a fan of Vampire Diaries? Uh, I think I had seen a few episodes in the beginning, and then I watched a few at the end because there was a character with my name. And so that had never happened before. Most people n- know certain characters with their names out there on TV. I had never had that experience. Right. So I watched those episodes. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, but working with Sarah was amazing on Level 16. The entire cast was pretty much female. And I got to work with Selena, who I had met on The Other Kingdom. She played Morgan on The Other Kingdom. And she had messaged me and said, I just booked a role. I'm going to be in Toronto. And I said, I just also booked a role. Oh, my God. And we ended up getting to work together again. So that was amazing. And it was a full female cast, a lot of which have gone on to do amazing projects. Um, My friend Kiana, who was on it, just... uh, finished working on Trinkets, which is on Netflix, seasons one and two. My friend Sydney was on V Wars, uh, which is also, Uh, it's the show with Ian Summerholder, which is also from from Vampire Vampire. Diaries. Yeah, yeah, everyone is exploding, and I'm so happy to see everyone succeeding. Well, it's a great movie. They should be, honestly. Yeah. Yeah, and it it, uh, premiered at VIF, which was really cool for us to all get to go and experience that together. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my god! Yeah, <laughs> how was that festival experience? Uh, the the first time, well, because you, you you go to TIFF, you go to festivals, but what was it like to be uh, in that festival uh, as a, an actor and uh, your film being showed? So weird, but also so cool to see something that you were a part of on the marquee sign. I think I have right. like five hundred saved photos <laughs> yeah. of that, and um. I mean, I had been in one movie before that premiered at TIFF, but I was quite young and didn't understand what that meant, really. Um, But it's really cool to be a part of the filmmaking experience and also see the audience's reaction, because I think it was so cool. I almost wanted to turn around in my seat and just watch the audience watching the film rather than watching the film, because seeing them react and get excited and like, cringe and get nervous and anxious while they're watching yeah. is so gratifying as an actor to know that what you're doing is moving people and the story that yeah. you're telling is worth telling yeah i mean i, I was on a sh- i did a short film when i was 14 and uh it was on a, at a festival and but i i was this uh this boyfriend that uh, was on a scooter and i had this uh, this this helmet on the entire shoot and they put makeup on me. I don't know why. I was going to say, was it really <laughs> warm in that helmet? Oh, yeah. It was really warm. Uh, <laughs> and I waited a lot, <laughs> as you do. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and they put on makeup on me, which I never, they never see my face on screen. So I don't know why they did that. Uh, it was a great film. Uh, but it, it's kind of weird to, to, it was a small moment on screen, but it's kind of weird to, you're to like see cringing your face a little that big? bit. I remember the first time I saw my face on screen, I was like, mom, is my face really that large? Uh, (laughs) Like, it's so strange. Why is my nose the size of, like, multiple large men on this screen? (laughs) I mean, we didn't didn't see my face. I I was wearing a helmet, and uh, you heard my voice. But it was still like, oh, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's such a crazy experience. Oh, uh, crazy. Uh, I want to see that short film now. I hope you have a copy of that that you can send to me. I have it on DVD, yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay, yeah. We're going to have uh, to have a viewing party. <laughs> <laughs> For sure, yeah. We have to organize something. Uh, yeah, so you're not only uh, an actor, like you said. You you dance, and you we, we connected at the beginning because you're also a writer like me. Um, so what's how did that happen i know you you did the, the creative thing when you were young and your teacher but uh how did that grow from there uh i've always loved writing i naturally always wanted to create my own content i remember getting my first camera i think i was 11 and it was this giant chunky thing and i was already writing lines to say to it and creating my own scripts and throughout High school, there wasn't a lot of opportunity in the school that I was in to be creative in that way. So my drama teacher let me write and help write one act plays for all of the other students. And I think that was really my first introduction to screenwriting and creating my own content. And I loved it. And I was like, well, now I need to apply to do this <laughs> so that I can learn more about it in an right. actual environment where there are people who know more and can teach me. And I got into York, which was an incredible experience, a program that a lot of people don't get into. Get in. It's very selective yeah. and very competitive, yeah. quite scary. <laughs> But oh, yeah. it, I think I needed that push. I needed a little bit of that fear and that fire in me and that competitiveness. Uh, to write yeah. some really great scripts. From there, I started uh, writing critiques for films, and then that became live theater and dance and music. So I did ballet. that for a while. Yeah. Ballet, which we have experienced together. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And right now, I'm doing a little bit of story editing for other people and maybe writing a little bit in the future. Although, I don't know about you. Well, actually, I do know about you. You've been writing this whole <laughs> pandemic, haven't you? Uh, yeah, I try to write every day. Uh, it's not been easy. Yeah. I, I, I try to blame the pandemic, but uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's weird because I, I wrote my first novel and then it went into editing and revising. It was a lot for like writing your first novel is, is a, like a really big process. Like I, would I wasn't used to to the revising and the editing process. Like I had written scripts, but it's not mm -hmm. the same because this is going to get published. Um, and uh, yeah, and then when I, my, my first book got out, I, I was writing my, my second book. Yesterday's not yet gone, off now, <laughs> GabrielVega.com. But my second book that I'm writing now, I started in March and then the pandemic hit. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, it was kind of, uh it, it it's big it's been a weird process because uh yeah i had i don't know it's uh it took a lot of my ma my mind the the pandemic and then uh the the racial thing the black lives matter took a lot of my mind too mm -hmm. uh so it's it's been weird but now i I listened to Dan Brown, the master class, and he says he wakes up at 4 a.m. every day. I wake up at 5.30. But like he says, like push yourself. And if you, you want to stay in bed, that's not the time. So that's what I'm doing. And I, it's been working well. I don't know if my writing is good. But well, I, you're getting up and you're doing the work. And that's the first step, yeah, right? Yeah, I'm pushing myself to write at least for an hour. Mm -hmm. And then I can do whatever after, you know, but I, I've done it for the day. Good. Because um, the day is so unpredictable after that. It, like those hours for me are the best because there's nothing. There's no emails. There's no, yeah, it's, uh, there are great hours and then you can move on for the day because you, you've done your work. I'm just picturing the whole world is asleep and Gabe is up and he is writing. <laughs> Oh, I love that moment. But this <laughs> this morning was a tough one. I, I woke up and I was like, my eyes, damn it, I just need to wake up. And I was looking at my screen and it was like so bright. And I was like, <gasps> and then I started writing and I think it's the most I did in a while. Yeah. So no. you write directly on your laptop? Oh, yeah. I can't do it. 
No, how do I you can't write? do it. I, I, I am very weird in my writing. I write like on blank pieces of paper, on napkins, on sticky notes, like anywhere that isn't the conventional place to be writing. I feel less pressure. Wow. But as soon as it's like a document that is blank right in front of my eyes, I'm like, uh, I don't know what to do. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. I, I thought about doing that. Yeah, it's uh, it's just so simple for the editing. I feel mm -hmm. like, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's uh. So what's your what's your best time to write then? My best time <laughs> to write is like two in the morning. I know it's oh really God. bad. Yeah. It's really bad. But I'll wake up in the middle of the night and I'm like, oh, that's the answer. I need to write it down. <laughs> so I mean it. It definitely always strikes me when I'm like in that weird in between asleep and in between awake and yeah. there's some sort of struggle that I need to write about that I've been working through. I think that's my favorite time to be writing. Yeah. It's probably not the best time and the most uh right. No. Uh no, I don't judge. Like you have to you have to 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 find your your process and how it works for you. Uh do you for me like I'm I'm writing in the morning, but like I'm writing in my head all throughout the day. Uh, it never leaves me alone. So are you the same? A hundred percent. When I am cleaning the house, it's usually because I'm actually writing in my head. When I am baking, it's because I am also writing in my head. Yeah. So if you see a very spotless household or some freshly made cupcakes, you know I'm trying to work something out <laughs> and Does something is bothering me. Yeah. Does it give you a lot of anxiety, the writing? Um, not so much anxiety. I think it's definitely the freest place that I feel, but okay. it, it takes a while for me to get there and to get over that initial leap into a project. Right. Like that first initial idea phase, I'll come up with a scene or a character or a like rough plot, but the idea of actually putting it down. It takes me a while to mill through my brain and to get yeah. through some things that I'm confident in before I put it down physically on paper. Because I feel like I place so much value and love onto things that are like in your hands in your story that I don't feel like it's right until it's been worked out mentally yeah. in my brain, at least like the bare bones, that it's respectful enough to be put down on paper. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, for me, I think it's, uh, yeah, there's a lot of anxiety related to it. But like during the first draft process, I try to be laid back and I try to, especially now, like I've, I've learned from, from writing the first book and from writing those scripts. Mm -hmm. uh, and yeah, I have to be like, I have to just write it and just be laid back and the editing will come later. And then the revising process, I, I see it coming. I see that I'm going to wake up in the middle of the night or I'm not going to fall asleep because I'm going to think. Ugh. It's mostly exterior. Like you you think about what people are going to think. Yeah. And then you, you think, oh, uh, you're very hard on yourself. You're your you're worst critics. I also think it's because creatives are very emotional and they yeah. love what they do so much that like the idea of dishonoring it and doing it a disservice is yeah. so real. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and it's also uh, like you have an original, like the idea at the beginning that you have, you want to stick to that, at least at the beginning stages. And I've learned that for me, it's not that simple. Yes, I have an outline, I outline and I, but during the writing process, it changes all the time. And uh, I have to like let it. Because yeah. otherwise, that's not being creative. That's just following a manual and you're just typing away, you know? I forget who said it. Um, it's going to bother me. I'll, I'll message you if I remember. Yeah. But a story is like a monster that you've created right. and you have to just let it just do its thing and live and breathe and be its own being. Oh, that's great. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. So what are you working on now? Where can people see you? see me uh i guess <laughs> find me on um on all of the social medias there isn't a ton going on um for film and tv right now although i'm doing a lot of auditioning so hopefully eventually something will start filming 
I have a movie coming out called Letters to Satan Claus. I, I'm thinking it's around December, but we don't really know yet. Oh, it's exactly. got a name now. It's got a name. Yes, great. it does have a name. Um, Can you pitch it for people? Because it's quite a great pitch. I have to be careful with my pitch because I'm afraid to give away too much. Yeah. But it is essentially about someone who writes a letter in this small Hallmark-esque town to Satan because she accidentally misspells Santa. And then chaos in, ensues in this small town because of it. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. basically a horror meets Allmark movie. Yeah, it's a Hellmark. <laughs> oh, wow. It's so great. Oh, yeah. I, I, I want to see that so bad. Because I, I saw you talk about it on an interview, and I was like, oh, my God, this sounds so good. It's such a great yeah. idea, such a great pitch. And, uh, yeah. I'll, I'll let you know when it comes out. Other than that, I've been doing a lot of podcasts and interviews. I've been supporting <laughs> all of the artists that I love, buying their books. Oh. Come on, plug it one more time. <laughs> Yesterday's not yet gone. You're real big enough. <laughs> now. Nothing stays buried forever, especially not the past. Yesterday is Not Yet Gone, a mystery novel by Gabriel Vega, host of the Very Creative Podcast. Available now, paperback and digital. GabrielVega.com. Buy it now. <laughs> um, yeah, I have friends who came out with music. I have friends who are putting on streamed shows. I've trying to been promoting those through my channels. I've also been doing some fun little taste test videos on my IGTV. I've been doing TikToks. Yeah. That's where everyone can find me, basically everywhere. <laughs> yeah. Very creative person. I'm sure you're like, because you're, you're always busy. You're always like, your, your mind always like must stay creative all the time because you, you're doing all these things, the TikTok, the, you did a YouTube before, and then you did, you do Instagram, which we didn't get into. I, I'd love to get your, why you're, you're doing that on Instagram. It's so fascinating, the, your style. Thanks. Um, yeah, I, this is no judgment against other people on Instagram, but I see a lot of people posting stuff for an older audience when yeah. they have little kids who are watching. I'm always very aware when I'm creating content that I'm right. a teacher and an educator and a role model. And right. there are kids who might be, you know, six or seven looking at my social media. So I always try to keep it a very pink. Uh, yeah, positive, very a great. very pink and positive and inspiring yeah. place. I, I took a lot in the beginning of quarantine of Photoshop classes. So that's where a lot of those um, fun fruit, vegetable, flower uh, photo manipulations come into play. I right. really like looking at um, sort of fantastical photography and things that make you think and inspire you to look at the world in a new way. Um, I feel like from day one, I've looked at the world like the flower is a dress and and the squash is a skirt and all of these things. And I like being able to have that space to put out that energy to be like, hey, look at yeah. how crazy this world could be if you looked at it through a new lens. So that's kind of wow. where my inspiration is on my social media. Yeah, it's it's a lot of fun to look at when, <laughs> when it, once it's like because now you have a lot of pink pictures and it's it's great to see your style yeah oh good i'm glad you like it <laughs> yeah so follow her uh joseph albert right you're always one of the first to comment and i appreciate that oh well, yeah your, your pictures are great so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so let's finish off uh what do you do when because i like we said, like you, your creative brain, you're, you're thinking about the writing when you're writing throughout the day, or mm -hmm. I, I'm sure it's the same with the acting and your character. So what do you do to chill out, like to relax, to get away from that? Is um, there a way? Because there's no way for me. I still think about it, but I, I try. That's not true. We have the same way. We okay. have bubble baths. Oh, sure. <laughs> yeah, I still think about it. But. It's still, you're still in your head writing, but we have yeah. bubble baths. Um, yeah, there are a couple of ways that I like to wind down. I do yoga. 
I take other people's dance classes because when I'm teaching, I'm definitely have my creative mind, but when I'm dancing, it's more of a freeing and expressive experience and I get less in my head about it. So when I am feeling really stressed out in any scenario, I blast music and I jump around in my room. Um, Yeah, I have a nice tea. I'm a big fan of tea and I do my bubble bath and that's kind of how I try to shut down my brain or journaling, which I guess is also writing, but it's different. (laughs) <laughs> yeah when my brain is fried i like to watch feel good movies or something that makes me like feel feel good you know and takes or it's just my favorite film or just uh yeah something so what's your your feel good movie let's try that movie yeah hmm. i don't hmm. sing it you in gave the rain. me a list come on yeah, i was like sing it singing in the rain is definitely my feel good movie Whenever I want to get happy inside yeah. and feel it's at a, peace, I put on movie. I put on a good old Hollywood musical. Uh, yeah. Right now, I've been watching rewatching a lot of TV. Yeah, what's your feel good TV show? Uh, the Marvelous Miss Maisel. Oh, it's amazing. It's so good. I've also been rewatching Gilmore Girls, which is also written by Amy Sher- Sherman Palladino. So, okay. uh, yeah. yeah, I just I love the comedic timing i love the era and the costuming and the actors oh so so good so what have you been watching uh it's it's changing all the time depends the uh, day right now i'm uh binging ratchet uh yeah how is it it's uh it's great like for me anything with ryan ryan murphy attached i will watch honestly uh good or bad i will watch uh yeah it's uh it's great it's uh it's not for kids let's just say that uh it's a lot of uh yeah you see a lot of things <laughs> well i'm excited to see ratchet i haven't started it yet but i've heard mixed reviews but if you, you gave it the a plus then i'll watch <laughs> well yeah i'm uh i know ryan murphy style by now uh binge glee i binge uh, i watched american horror story on a yearly basis same. So it's kind of, uh, well, it's kind of something that I'm familiar with, mixed or not. Like, I loved Hollywood. I, I binged it, you know? Mm. It's uh, it's something, good or bad. Like, I, I, I'll watch it and I'll still enjoy it, you know? Uh, there's a really great story that I'm not going to share here because I'm afraid um, yeah. that I, I found out about and I really wanted to write about. And then I looked at the rights to the story and Ryan Murphy currently holds it. Oh my god! And I'm just waiting for him to do something with it or give it up so I can take it. <laughs> <laughs> but I guess I'm on the right track with my storytelling if I'm interested in the same stories as he is. <laughs> oh yeah, well he's interested in everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah he's a uh, yeah he's quite a big character in Hollywood. Yeah, for sure. Would you say he's one of your favorite creators right now? Yeah. I would say, yeah, I, I love the stories he's telling on mm-hmm. TV and in movies. Uh, yeah, I, I'm trying to think. There's somebody else. But, like, I, I'm i a big fan of Greg Berlanti just for the for the for all the shows that he has. Like, how can you do that and, uh, like, still have a family life and everything? Like, yeah. that's, that's crazy to me. Uh, yeah, Sarah Gamble is uh, the, the executive producer and uh, creator of You for mm-hmm. Netflix is something I admire right now. She has a great Q&A for writers. Uh, any of you want to check that out? I think it's great. And uh, yeah. Uh, so what's your feel? Ooh. Ooh. It happens <laughs> a lot. but uh, we'll It's just you're it. so excited. <laughs> yeah. What's your feel good song? Feel good song. Sitting on the dock of the bay, Otis Redding. Interesting. Okay. I have to listen to that. What's your feel-good musical? Musical? You know the answer to this. It's Singing in the Rain. Wait, are we talking about like stage musical? Or or stage that you've seen. That I've seen? Yeah. I've seen a lot of stage. Mm. Favorite stage musical? Say Grease. (laughs) <laughs> oh yeah, we saw Grease together. I really did. That rendition of Grease was really good. Yeah, it was good. Fine, I'll oh, stick wait, with Grease. When, when I'll stick out. with Grease because yeah. watching it 
with the audience that I had and my guest was the best part of it. Oh, thank you. Well, <laughs> I just remember them coming out at the beginning. It was just amazing. Like the, the opening number. And dancing on rollerblades. Like, oh, yeah. Th- that I would never. I could barely. I tried rollerblading this summer, and I tried to dance, and it was just not going to happen. I have a new appreciation for that skill. Theater is so fun. I'm like, that's the, the saddest part about it. <laughs> the, <laughs> not the saddest pa- part, but, like, it's the sad part about this pandemic. Yeah, yeah, I don't know if you guys had this in Montreal, but we had all of the venues. Um had turned red in um, in solidarity with the people who lost their jobs who worked in theater during okay. this pandemic. And that was, yeah. I want to say two nights ago. And it was kind of heartbreaking wow. <laughs> too, because I'm, I'm right by like the ballet. I'm right by the theater. And so it was. Oh, they're really still sad. going. They're still well, going. They're, they're lit up red. They're not so much. Okay. Well, they're going online, but right. I think they're canceled for this season, which oh, breaks my, my heart. Uh, but yeah, thank you for, for doing this. Uh, of course. It, it seemed like so short, but it, it took us a, a, lot, a lot of time. But, I know. Uh, I feel like this happens every time we're together. It's like, oh yeah, it's been six hours and we're still talking. Yeah. Uh, but there's so much more to uncover with you about the creative process. And I hope I, I, I get to talk to you again on this podcast. Because, Absolutely. Yeah. I think we, we went over everything you did, but now I am really interested in the, the meat of it. Completely. Uh, yeah. So uh, thank you so much for doing this, Joseph Albert. Uh, so yeah, I have, a, I have a great week and uh, yeah, we'll talk to you soon. Thanks for having me. Bye. Bye. You've been listening to The Very Creative Podcast with Gabriel Vega. Catch us next week for an all-new episode. To find out more, go to gabrielvega.com slash podcast and follow us on social media at The Very Creative Podcast. To watch on video, go to YouTube and search for The Very Creative Podcast and subscribe. See you next week.